Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to bring additional explanation to the video where I was showing how to calculate the circumference of an ellipse and if you want to know which video I'm talking about you can find it here. So let's uh, put things back in context. So basically here's what happened. I was uh, doing my demonstration and at a certain point, it was at the beginning, I did this. I said uh, that let's draw a circle C with a radius A on a Y plane with the x-axis crossing uh, the center of the circle and if we observe the circle from a z-axis uh, which is passing through the center of the circle and we rotate the y-plane with an angle theta I stated that we obtain or we observe a, an ellipse with a, with a semi-major axis A and a semi-minor axis B and some of you told me that this must be proven that this must be demonstrated that rotating a circle becomes an ellipse and this is exactly what I'm going to demonstrate in this video so I'm going to keep it simple I'm not going to go through like crazy demonstrations I'll just keep it simple okay uh, so let's go one step backward uh, I just need here to draw the radius a on the y axis that we can uh, see here and now we can begin with our rotation so we can see that the circle see when you observe it it becomes another shape okay so I'm not saying it's an ellipse I'm just saying it's something else okay so we can say it becomes a compressed circle so it's not the same circle C uh, so that's why I give a different letter I call it uh, E and we see that the radius A that was on the Y plane it became shorter it became a compressed radius if I can call it like this well it's not a radius anymore now because they are different but uh, let's just call it compressed radius with a length b and this length b is actually the, um, uh, the, the, the distance between the x-axis and uh, I don't know why this is lagging uh, okay now it's working so just the distance between the x-axis and the height uh, reached by the circle after rotating it with the angle theta so if you want to find the distance b if you just translate the segment here against the old radius A, uh, well, this can be found by the cosine uh, theta, okay? So uh, the ratio between B and A is uh, cosine theta, so B is equal to A times cosine theta. Okay, so uh, let's move on. I just need to keep this uh, drawing, and I'm going to add the drawings of the circle before doing any rotation. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, to place the circle C on a Cartesian plane with the, uh, with the origin on the center of the circle. The origin doesn't have to be on the center of the circle, okay? But I'm just placing it there to keep it simple, to keep it easy, and so visually it's easier to understand, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going just to place a point uh, on the circle. I just need it for my demonstration. So let's place a point here that we can call a P yeah, with the coordinates X1 and Y1. And so if you want to know where this point goes after rotating the circle C and placing the same Cartesian plane on this new shape, huh, so this uh, compressed circle E, uh, well, the point P uh, will move here. So in, it will have the coordinates of X1, huh, so the same uh, X position didn't change, so still X1. But on the y-axis, we can see it's much lower. Uh, that's why it's not, uh, it's not V1 anymore. I mean, we call it, uh, I mean, I call it uh, Y2. It's a different value, so I call it, give it a different name. And since those coordinates are actually different from the point P, I will say that after rotating the circle uh, C, it becomes this compressed circle E, and point P becomes P prime with the coordinates X1 and Y2. Okay. So I needed to make this construction for my demonstration. And so now let's finally start this demonstration. So first I need to remind the equation of a circle. The equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. So what does it mean? It means that if I take any point of the circle and I take, for example, point P, okay, and I put the coordinates of point P in this equation, uh, it will become x one squared plus y one squared and this is equal to the radius squared and in our case the radius is a so it will give me a squared and i just would like to bring your attention on this result i just want you to remember that x one squared and y one squared equals to 
a squared. Okay, now let's continue. Let's remind what's the equation of, a, of an ellipse. The equation of an ellipse with a semi-major axis A and a semi-minor axis B is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal to 1. So what does this mean? It means that if I take an ellipse on a Cartesian plane and I take any point that belongs to the ellipse and I put their coordinates in that equation here, the result will be 1. Okay, so in my case, I'm not saying that this is an ellipse, okay? I don't know what is it. It's a compressed circle, okay? I call it compressed circle. But if I take the coordinates of P prime, okay? If with the coordinates of P prime, so x1 squared over a squared plus y2 squared over b squared equals to 1, then it means that P prime belongs to an ellipse with a semi-major axis A and a semi-minor axis B. And so it, if it belongs to an ellipse, well, it means that this shape, it's an ellipse. Okay? So, let's see. So let's solve for E equal to x1 squared over a squared plus y2 squared over b squared. So let's start. I did nothing at this stage. I just did a copy pass of this. So E is equal to x1 squared over a squared plus y2 squared over b squared. And I just would like to, uh, to make a small bracket here. If I want to, let's say, find the value of y2. Just remember how we, find, uh, how we found the value of b, okay? We said that b is actually the height reached by the circle after rotating it with the angle theta. So b is, a, is equal to a times cosinus theta. And so the point p, when we rotated the circle, it became p prime and this position. So if you want to know how high is this on the y-axis, we can use the same method, okay? So we can use the cosine function. So y2 is equal to y1 times cosine theta. So I'm going to use this result and inject it in my equation. So my equation becomes, so this doesn't change, huh? so x1 squared over a squared plus y2 is y1 plus cos theta, everything squared, of course, because here it was squared, over b squared. And also, I can uh, replace b with a previous uh, result that we found. Huh? So remember that b is equal to a times cosine theta. So I'm going to add an additional step with this, uh, even though I could have done everything in one step, but I just wanted to take my time, you know, to explain. So this becomes b, a times cosine theta, and everything squared, of course, because it's b squared. Okay, so let's develop this. So it becomes x1 squared over a squared plus y2 squared times cos squared of uh, theta over a squared times cos squared of theta. And here we can notice that we have cos squared theta as a common uh, as a common factor and the top and on the bottom so we can get rid of them and this becomes x1 squared plus i mean x1 squared over a squared plus y1 squared uh, over a squared and you remember what x1 squared and y1 squared give me well you remember here x1 squared plus 1 squared they give me a squared so i'm going to replace this result by a squared so this gives me a squared over a squared and this gives 1 so e is equal to 1 so if this equation is equal to 1 in that case we can conclude that p prime belongs to an ellipse with a semi-major axis a and a semi-minor axis b and so we can make the conclusion that this is an ellipse so e is an ellipse with a semi-major axis a and a semi-minor axis b so now I can affirm that if we draw a circle C with a radius A on the Y plane with the X axis crossing its center and we observe from the Z axis uh, passing through the center of the circle and we rotate the Y plane uh, with an angle theta, well, we obtain or we observe an ellipse with a semi-major axis A and a semi-minor axis B. So, Thank you very much for watching this video. I would like to thank you for all your feedback and comments. Actually, it motivates me even more uh, to see that you are uh, interested in my work and it pushes me even further to, 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 to keep uh, digging and to find the, uh, the formula to calculate the exact circumference of an ellipse. Thank you very much and see you next time in another video. Ciao.